Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us today for the next webinar in our What's New series. In today's webinar, we'll cover some of the newest features in Microsoft 365 that you can implement in your business, as well as covering some brand new features that give us a bit of an insight into the future of where Microsoft is headed. Don't feel like you need to make notes or take it all in straight away, as we'll be sending out a recording and a follow-up fact sheet later today. Also, if you have any questions, please do feel free to drop those into the Q&A box at the side as we go along. I will try to keep an eye on those um, as we as we go through and, and answer them as relevant to the content. But if I miss any, then there's also some time for a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So what's on the agenda for today? Um, so we'll be taking a quick look at Bedrock and the Eight Rocks process. Then we'll be moving on to looking at the new additions to the Microsoft Viva Suite, followed by automatic hand lowering in Teams meetings, which is now available. And then we'll be looking at Teams meeting recap enhancements plus collaborative meeting notes. Next up, we'll be looking at spatial audio, then updates to Microsoft Forms, captions in PowerPoint Live, and we'll be finishing up by telling you what to do next, what to look out for in terms of this webinar series and potentially how Bedrock can help you uh, with your business and your IT requirements. So welcome to those of you who might not have met us before. Welcome to everyone, in fact. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a quick introduction um, for those of you who, who might not have, have met Bedrock before. My name's Jennifer Benj and I am the Marketing Manager at Bedrock. Bedrock is an IT managed service provider and Microsoft partner. This means that most of the IT we implement is based on the Microsoft stack. So this includes Microsoft 365, SharePoint, Teams, Azure, etc. We're also experts in secure, resilient networks where high security is critical. So we work with organisations that have some of the highest security requirements in the UK. The most important thing we want to achieve, no matter what your organisation does, is to make sure your IT strategy is supporting your business as a whole. We do this with the help of our eight strategic rocks. So these are, as you can see on the screen, data, skills, investment, backup, strategy, security, quality of service, and finally collaboration. This series of webinars in particular were designed to help with the collaboration rock as Microsoft 365 and the apps are mostly collaboration tools. So we want to help businesses that are already investing in these tools, already paying out the subscriptions for Microsoft 365, but potentially aren't getting the most value out of that investment by not using those tools to their full capacity. So in these webinars, we'll talk you through some of the features that are probably already available to you that you might not necessarily be using and just give you a heads up on things that are coming in the future so you can make sure that you're ready to use them as soon as they're available. So I mentioned there are eight rocks process and um, we use those eight rocks to host stakeholder workshops for people that we work with. This is called the eight rocks assessment. This is a stakeholder workshop designed to get consensus on your business priorities. And as I said before, make sure that your IT strategy is supporting those business priorities. So it can be conducted face to face or virtually, and it helps get leaders and investment investors aligned behind the best way to solve their IT issues, address their cost savings and make their next investment decisions. Um, so there's no cost implications to doing this. Uh, we're happy to conduct these. All that we asked is that you um, have a mutual investment of time. So making sure that those key investment holders are there at that meeting so we can make sure everyone's aligned and on the same page. If that sounds of interest, then we'll happily follow up with you after the webinar. So let's start by looking at the first item on the, our agenda today for our new releases in Microsoft Viva. So Microsoft Viva continues to evolve and we've talked a lot over the past year or so um, about the latest um, releases in Microsoft Viva. In the March webinar, we talked about how Microsoft, uh, our, how Microsoft Yammer is being updated to be called Microsoft in, uh, Viva Engage and that is still ongoing. So Yammer is becoming Engage. It's going to take a while. There are a few steps on the way, but that process has now started and we'll be looking out for further changes on that throughout the year. And we also have now have news of a release date for the latest additions to the Viva suite of tools. The two newer additions to Viva that we haven't previously spoken about are Viva Amplify and Viva Pulse. 
So you can see on the circle here, we've talked about most of these over the past year, but it's Amplify and Pulse that we're going to be talking about today. Viva Pulse is an employee feedback tool that allows managers and leaders to request feedback day to day. This is similar to other employee feedback engagement tools that you might have already been using or you might have in your business at the moment. Um, for example, Office, Vi Office Vibe is one of those um, that I've used previously in the past at different businesses. Um, and there are a number of these engagement tools out there. The idea is that Viva Pulse will give you all of the insights you need to take real time action and understand your team in the moment. This is all within the Microsoft Teams environment that your team and yourself are already working in day to day. So instead of having boring corporate internet processes that no one really looks at, you can use this to build an employee engagement platform. As it's within Teams, there's also no extra admin required from users. So there's no sort of logging into separate systems to get that engagement and you'll be able to see everything within Teams itself. Viva Pulse can prompt employees to feedback on current projects, uh, feelings within the team, or even check in on well-being. It does this by giving you powerful templates that you can use and also research-backed research questions. So this is being released in July, um, and there's no additional cost if you did want to use this on top of, if, you, if you're already paying for the Viva suite of tools, this will just be implemented automatically at no extra cost. So that's worth bearing in mind if you are using one of those separate external um, employee feedback tools. Uh, make sure that you kind of check that Viva Pulse is actually going to fulfill what you need it to do. And then potentially there's a cost saving there. So you're not having to duplicate your um, your subscriptions in terms of getting those insights that you need. Next up, we've got Viva Amplify. So this is the second new release that Microsoft have talked about this year. Viva Amplify lets you centralise communication processes in a single space so you can save time and focus on what matters. This is going back to the idea of making an internal platform that people actually want to look at so that you can share all the important stuff, internal announcements that you need your teams to know about that sometimes get lost in the day to day chat as, as we communicate it now. You can also use this to reduce clutter by planning, analysing and writing communications in a single hub. You can seamlessly manage approvals and the lifecycle of various campaigns from one place. So you can have different teams working on different announcements all within this Amplify hub and then just decide which ones are going to be published out for the rest of the organisation. Viva Amplify helps you craft more effective messages with AI driven insights. So you can use campaign objectives to set goals and measure outcomes. You can also understand how people are interacting with your message and adjust accordingly so that your communications approve over time. So this is something you might be doing manually at the moment. If you know what kind of communications work well within your organisation, you decide to do more of those. This is just giving you those insights that, that make it a, a quicker process to be able to replicate processes that, that are working and do more of those. Uh, we do we don't have an exact release date for this one yet, but we know it's coming soon and it, it possibly will be around the same time as Viva Pulse. So speaking of the AI driven insights in Viva Amplify, um, those of you who joined us at last month's webinar might remember that we spent quite a lot of time talking about the new release of Microsoft Copilot. This is the AI driven assistant that will be appearing across all Microsoft 365 apps. Um, I got quite excited about this one. So if you if you missed last month's webinar, um, do catch up on that um, on our recording on the YouTube channel or on our website, because um, it's it, I think this will be quite a significant change going forward in how that we use these Microsoft apps. Uh, so it'll be no surprise that Copilot will also be appearing in Microsoft Viva. Um, so this first example here shows you how it will be used within Viva Goals. And in Viva Goals, Copilot will support leaders to set strategies, giving employees clarity on goals that can help boost engagement and productivity. Working across existing Word documents like annual business plans or strategy papers, Copilot will draft objectives and key results, help uh, leaders track goal management across the organisation, empower employees to measure their own performance against their goals and offer tips on how to help them overcome blockers. 
So this is just a quick screenshot that we've been given by Microsoft to show how this might work. So you can see it's actually going into some of your separate documents that you potentially have in an Excel sheet or in a Word document and pulling out those goals in numbers that you want to achieve as a business and then putting that into Viva Goals so that it's like one single dashboard where you can track all of those goals and objectives in one place. In Viva Engage, Copilot will help leaders to improve their writing and convey messages that better engage their employees. Copilot will scan across trending topics within an, within an organization to offer leaders relevant and tonally appropriate messaging, which they can then use in their posts. It will then analyze the engagement metrics and assess employee sentiment to help leaders focus on future messages um, that focus on what their employees care about most. So again, it's just going back to things that you might be doing manually at the moment in terms of tailoring your messaging and doing more of the stuff that's gonna to appeal to the right audiences but it's just giving you that insight automatically um, through the use of AI and pulling out that messaging that's really going to help you to, um, to progress what you want to do in your business. So the way that this is all tying together, I think is really interesting. Um, I think it's something that we definitely need to be keeping an eye on in terms of this isn't really even going to be a, a separate tool eventually. Um, it will be tied into the processes that we're doing every day. It will be tied into the apps and programs that we're already using. And it will hopefully <laughs> make our everyday lives a bit easier in terms of just giving us the prompts that we need, the, the insights that we need from all these separate documents that we've got going on, pulling in all that information together and giving you one platform where you can use it in one place. So all of that's quite kind of big thinking, big futuristic stuff. These are going to be big changes. Let's let's take it back a notch and look at one quick win that we've got this month, which is we've talked about this a few times um, a, a few months ago as a coming soon item. And I promised that I'd let you know when it's available. Now it is. Here we have automatic hand lowering in Teams meetings. A really simple thing that I think is going to make a big difference to your meetings. It will stop you doing those annoying kind of breaks in the conversation where you have to say, oh, have you asked your question? Are you done now? Can you put your hand down? It will happen automatically. So Teams will automatically lower hands in Teams meetings if that attendee has spoken. Users who raise their hand in a Teams meeting and then speak will see a notification informing them that their hand will be automatically lowered soon. The notification will allow them to keep their hand raised if they choose to. So you've asked your question, you've probably just forgotten to, to lower your hand. So the person who's conducting that meeting still sees a raised hand and they ask you again. That's hopefully going to solve this problem is that once you've spoken, automatically you'll just get this message saying that your hand will be lowered. This is available right now. Um, it's only available on Teams desktop, so you won't get it in the mobile app, but definitely I think a, a big quick win um, that we can start using straight away. Next up, we've got um, some Microsoft Teams meeting recap enhancements. So Microsoft are improving Teams meeting recapping. Your recording uh, transcripts, meeting content and meeting notes will all be available under a new recap tab. So you can watch your recording directly in the new tab while reviewing the notes and the, and the transcript without having to switch screens or apps. This is due in late May to early June this year. So keep an eye out. It might start rolling out fairly soon towards the end of the month. So take a look in your Teams recap. See, see if you have that new recap app of a, um, tab available to you and start using it if this sounds of interest. So a few caveats to this. Um, this will only work if, if, those, if the features that you want it to search for are actually available. So for example, if you don't set the meeting to record or if you've not got an automatic recording policy in place, obviously that recording is not going to be available in the recap tab. Um, same goes for content. So if you've attached any PowerPoints or um, Word documents within that meeting chat, those will be available within the content tab. Um, there'll also be an attendance report as well that the organiser will be able to see. Um, there'll be any manual notes that got taken during that meeting and there will also be the transcript which you can view, search and download within that recap tab. 
Uh, you might be able to see the little loop logo um, on, on the screenshot here next to where it says Marketing Sync. Um, that's because these new features will be powered by Microsoft Loop functionality. Again, we've spoken a huge amount about Microsoft Loop over the past year or so, and it's just exciting to see it finally being rolled out and being built into these tools that we're already using daily. So here's what the recap tab looks like when you're reviewing the transcript from a meeting in the new recap panel. On a similar note, uh, Microsoft are improving the agenda, notes and follow up tasks experience in Teams meetings. Again, this new functionality and capability is powered by Loop and it also utilises Planner to do Office.com and OneDrive for business. Again, this is due late May to early June, so take a look and see if it's available, kind of keep an eye out. Again, we'll, we'll let you know as well when it's actually fully available, the same as with the automatic hand lowering. Uh, so you will soon see a notes button during meetings that allows you to access these new capabilities. The meeting notes will be shown on the right pane of the meeting window and you'll also be able to see to view them in a browser. You'll be able to collaborate in real time, create an agenda, take notes and add tasks with colleagues. When you are assigned a task in the meeting, you will also receive an email notification and it will be synced with the planner and to do apps. So. I don't know about you guys, but at the moment in Bedrock, if we're having a team meeting and there's some actions that we need to capture, often we'll just drop them straight into the chat panel next to the meeting or someone will have a separate notebook and, and, and track no, um, actions there. So I think this will be a really useful feature just in terms of making sure that those actions are viewable by everybody in the meeting and just to make sure that those actions also don't get lost or just hidden away in one person's notebook um, and not then actioned <laughs> as you would want them to be before your next catch up. In the collaborative meeting notes, meeting organisers will also see um, they, they'll have the ability to add to their collaborative notes before the meeting actually commences. So you'll be able to prepare by adding agendas or other materials. After the meeting, meeting notes will remain accessible for all participants on the team's calendar meeting details page. The experience again is a loop component, so they can be copied easily out of the meeting and into chats, group chats and emails or move to another file location. And because it's a loop, it will remain live no matter where it actually ends up. So even if you've copied it into a private chat with somebody else, if it gets updated in the main me meeting notes, those updates will appear across all of the places where that loop appears. So again, it's just everyone's completely up to date with what's going on, what needs to be done next. It's a much quicker way rather than having to email back and forth to say, oh, have you done this action? You can just see it within the loop. So again, looking forward to seeing this rolled out. Look out for it towards the end of the month or into June. Um, so someone has asked on this, um, I think, regarding the previous part about um, the Teams meeting updates. Um, does the attendance report report on non-attendance? It, it literally just reports on who was in that meeting. <laughs> so if you have a list of people who were invited to that meeting, you'll be able to see if they attended or not. Um, that's the, just the simple way that it works across all of all Teams meetings attendance records. Next up, we have spatial audio. So Microsoft are introducing spatial audio to Microsoft Teams meetings, creating, and I quote here, a next generation immersive soundscape. Um, that's very Microsoft language there. Um, when, and that this will happen when you're using a wired stereo headset or built in stereo speakers. Um, this is due in late May to mid June 2023. So what does a next generation immersive soundscape actually mean? Um, well, it means that essentially if you use this feature, it aims to make conversations feel more natural, making you feel like you're in the room with the people you're on a call with. And it should also hopefully make it easier to follow the conversation if there's multiple people all talking together. If you're using a wired stereo headset or built in stereo speakers, you'll be able to select spatial audio on the meeting pre join screen in device settings. You may also see the spatial audio introduction for the first time uh, you enter a meeting once the feature is available to you. 
So you can see just the, um, the smaller box with the purple at the bottom of it that I've pasted over the screenshot here. You might see that prompt as soon as this becomes available to you um, and you'll be able to click and follow the instructions from there to, to make it available. Um, this is just, again, a screenshot that we've got from Microsoft. I don't have this capability at the moment, so I haven't been able to test it out myself. Um, but as soon as it's available to us, we will be checking and um, hopefully reporting back on whether we think you should do it or not. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. You might get the prompt or you might just need to find it yourself in device settings once people within your organisation say it's available to you. You will also be able to control spatial audio by going to settings, devices and then spatial audio from there. So a few things to bear in mind when spatial audio does become available to you. Um, it will only be enabled in gallery view uh, within your Teams meetings. You will also get the best spatial effect with three or more attendees in the meeting. One to one calls and large meetings are not yet supported, so you won't see that functionality available for those meeting types. And also wireless audio devices are not yet supported. So again, this is coming late May to early June. Keep an eye out and um, see if you get that prompt. If you don't, see if it's available in your settings and have a go, see if it suits you. So it's funny, actually, um, we've got to an update to Microsoft Forms because I actually had a conversation with someone who comes to these webinars. Um, hello, Duncan, if you're here. Um, and we had a conversation about using Microsoft Forms. And funnily enough, here's a new update coming to Forms uh, very soon. Microsoft is releasing a new feature that will allow Microsoft Forms creators the capability to allow form or quiz respondents to edit their responses after they have submitted them. Once this is enabled, the form respondents can edit their responses as long as the form or quiz is still open. So the answers cannot be accessed if the form or quiz is closed or removed. This will need to be enabled by your Microsoft 365 admin. And then once it has been enabled, it won't be selected by default on your forms. If, there's an, if this is an option that you want to be available, you can choose to enable it separately on a form by form basis. This is due um, early to late May, so any time now really. So if you are a user of Microsoft Forms, um, whether that's in Teams or separately, you can start looking for this functionality if that's something that you think might be beneficial to you. Okay, our final update, which um, was a last minute one, uh, it just got announced earlier this week, is that closed captions will now be supported for embedded videos in PowerPoint Live for Teams. So when creating a PowerPoint presentation, you have the option to include a closed captions file with your video that's embedded in that PowerPoint. When the presentation is, is shared via PowerPoint Live for Teams, any embedded video that includes closed captions stored in a separate file will automatically include the option for attendees to turn on or to, uh, turn on closed captions. When the closed captions are turned on, they will appear at the bottom of the slide. When no clo closed captions are available for the video, the closed captions button just won't appear. So it will be there if, if the captions are available and if that's something that the user wants to, to, um, to allow to appear on their screen. Um, but if there's no none available, that button just won't be there. So it won't sort of be obvious that that, that functionality isn't available. Um, so just a, a quick one there. Um, you know, it's quite a niche thing if you're embedding video within PowerPoint and then you need to caption them, but it could be a big difference for some people in terms of accessibility. So it's important to bear in mind if you are using video within PowerPoint Live. OK, that's all the updates we had for today. So I just wanted to let you know about our next What's New webinar, which will be happening in June. Um, so if you want to join us again, please do sign up. Car has just dropped the, um, the sign up form into the chat there. Um, so use that form to sign up now or you can go to our Bedrock website at a later date and sign up there. Um, it will take place on the 1st of June. And once again, we'll be looking at all the latest updates and new releases. Hopefully we'll have some more news about these features that have been um, announced today and we'll keep you up to date with everything else going forwards. So I hope to see you there. Um, we have a little bit of time to come Q&A if anyone's got any further questions. Um, if not, please do take this time to sign up to the next one. Um, 
And if the eight rocks assessment that I spoke about at the beginning of the webinar might be of interest to you or your organisation, then please do feel free to contact us about getting the process started for organising that um, for your business. Um, Rachel, so it's good to see that there's new editing on form of forms options. Yep, I agree. Uh, I think it will make a big difference to people, especially if you're using forms um, regularly. You know, it's something you can decide on a case by case basis if you do want those edits to be allowed or not. Um, and it just lets you get a better picture of what that person wants to say on that form. OK, without further ado, then. Um, oh, sorry, I have one more one more question sneak in. Um, when will co when will Copilot go live? So we covered this mostly on the last last month's webinar, but Copilot is basically rolling out this year. We don't have any kind of absolute solid dates on where things will be available or what apps will be available first, but it will be happening this year. So I think there's lots of excitement to come in terms of new releases and how that will actually be working across all of these different apps. Um, but it's definitely we'll keep you up to date as soon as we have any absolutely solid release dates for Microsoft Copilot. So if anyone's got any further questions, please do feel free to contact me after the webinar. Um, I'll be sending out the recording later today, so just feel free to respond on that email. And I look forward to seeing you all again in June. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone.